you quit standing there and talking about it. Start swinging your axes. The executioner brute moves up to here. Two more. Uh, you were a weapon uh, drawn. Yeah, and then he looks up at at the ghost, and then the destruction of his the rest of his group. Uh, you would have seen that here. Okay, he sees a flying thing. He pulls out a javelin. Okay. More. Mort stands up and drinks a shield potion or extract rather. Okay. Uh, Ama just gave you a hero point. Uh, then he'll step over to here. Because he's got to grab his... Uh, so, uh, you, no, sorry. Steps up. He doesn't do that. Like He stands up. He stands up. Okay. Drinks the shield and draws his... He's got a battle axe. Two-handed. That's including the hero point use. That's including the hero point use for an extra action. Okay. Oh, you fuck now. This is Alistair. Uh, <laughs> Executioner Thugs. <laughs> Full defense, and they move behind the guy with the full plate. <laughs> yeah. Chaga. We'll move forward so Loafs can do stuff. Defensively move forward. Alistair. Alistair hasn't uh, hexed the Guy with the great sword, but he will now. Guy with the great sword makes his save. Executioner sorcerer is down. Barnabas. Uh, Barnabas can he get close enough. Yeah. He cannot, so he will get that far. Damn it. And magic missile, the executioner brute, too. It doesn't look like he's been injured yet. It looks like he's sweating and breathing hard from running all the running around. But <laughs> he tries to like swipe at the magic missiles with his sword, uh, but they. Un... Yeah, he's just like that's not how that works, mate. <laughs> Unerringly <laughs> zip around his sword, <laughs> blast into his armor, uh, doing five points of damage. Uh, that brings us to Los. <laughs> Los goes zipping forward and reaches through the guy's armor, trying to give him aging damage. Bard Song still running. Bard Song is still running. Nine aging damage, and the guy. This is a fourth save. Might be able to make this. He doesn't. Takes the full nine damage. Oh! Uh, Executioner Brute. Well, he is not a smart lad. He takes two swings at Los. That first swing hit. Just tagged Los's leg. And he took another downward swing again, but realized that he wasn't quite doing anything. And kind of five foot steps away from Los, like he's maybe assess the situation and like he wants to get out of here now um mort mort drinks his mutagen oh this guy sorry this guy had to roll twice oh he made a save no run okay mort drinks his mutagen and then 
<laughs> I got an axe too. <laughs> These guys are like trying to run away. It's one move or two moves. Barnabas is letting them go. Come again. <laughs> okay, I think there are AOOs on that first guy as he's running this way Half from Mort. Yeah, there's, an, uh... there's enough room in there for you to swing in. Uh, Mort's saving it for the uh, this guy. Okay. So that was two moves, and then their third move is 30 feet away. They're wearing light armor, so they're 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 zipping. They're running. They had enough. They they fought wizards, and there's a ghost, and they're outnumbered now. Uh, Looking ugly. <laughs> yep. Shaga. Shaga sees the two guys running. He doesn't want to accidentally hit Mort, especially with his hit point damage. So Chaga, I think, is going to use a daze of his own. Yep, we we made it. We, we made the sorcerer. Uh, okay, so he steps in. Oh, you're not looking very well, um, Alistair. Same with you, fat man. Oh, I guess I don't feel very good either. They, they, hurt. they hurt me. Yeah, they're about to get hurt, though. Ah, uh, the Executioner Brute is dazed by Chaga's spell. All right. Alistair. <laughs> yeah, Alistair is laughing at this point. Uh, funny now. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't funny a few rounds ago. <laughs> yep. He is going to... He's vindictive? He's going to move in and try to touch the guy with his corrupting touch. Okay. AC 12 touch. Hits AC oh, 11 okay. touch. He does 1d6 points of ooh, 6 points of corrupting damage. And then this guy needs to make a saving throw or be shaken, I believe. Yep. Some bad times. Uh, he makes a save because apparently these guys are like, no, we're, we're we singularly <laughs> right. We will collect heads for our gang. Um, to rise in the hierarchy of head collecting. Uh, Executioner Sorcerer down, Barnabas. Um, he's got another grease. Move in Greece? Yeah, we're going to move. Uh, no, um, the Executioner Brute, too. Oh, so you're going to move I, and grease him. Yep. So make running away that much harder. Kind of like uh, I think the other way. Just uh, so he's, yeah. So that the corner's there. Like, or, exactly. Limited right. options for escape. <laughs> He fails to save and falls down. <laughs> now he's screwed. All right. Los moves in and reaches down and is laughing at him as he is trying to inflict aging damage. Hits. 12 damage. And the guy powers through his fort save, so he only takes six. Because he wants okay. it to go on longer. <laughs> long the executioner day. brute spends his round being dazed. He is still prone. He can't get up. <laughs> Mort. Mort. With whom the battle began, the battle now ends. Ah, he's so angry right now. <laughs> I would be too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's got his mutagen. There's a bard song, and the guy is prone and dazed. I don't know if that that doesn't affect Stacey. Just prone. Yeah, just prone. Uh, power attack plus mutagen plus the guy's AC prone right now is sixteen. 
Oh, that's not a... Plus 13. AC 17. You just, can't roll. You just hit, though. Yeah, 20 plus. Uh, minus 5. Eight. Okay, that's a hit. So you, you're just attacking until there's nothing left? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Making that bloody mess. It's like, oh... And oh, AC 21. Oh, you hit three times. It's just like, I think he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he sees it. I think he's paced. Uh, it's uh, uh, 68 plus. Uh, one. Ouch. And there's a small part of me that's hoping those other guys are looking back just to see what happened to the last guy. Because yep. he took 76 points of damage. Oh, my God. Me? Okay. Um, yeah. He has 39 hit points and a 15 con. He had 13 hit points left. He had 28. So, yeah, you killed him a couple times over. He times dismembered over? him in the streets. Okay. He did. Just covering Alistair in blood while he's laughing. <laughs> uh, the thugs are running down the street. Fuck you, Zarwin! <laughs> Mort spends a couple rounds just, ah! <laughs> coming out, like just waving yep. the axe around, chasing them. Yeah, they saw Zarwin and they, they, they said fuck you to him as they ran by. <laughs> <laughs> Zarwin like poking his head out and looking. <laughs> All right, if you let them run away, they're just gonna run away. Yeah, he he, eventually, he runs away. Um, no one else wants to chase, and eventually Mort realizes he can't catch them. So no, the the party is way too injured for this. Yeah. Uh, uh, who the f- executioners, huh? What did they want? Well, some of them aren't dead yet, so let's ask him. Mort, can you give us a hand here? Mm, fine. Mort picks up the sorcerer and I guess the fancy looking guy and just steps on the head of Executioner Brute One. The one that crit you a bunch of times? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Someone check his things. He might have something valuable. Pick up both these guys. Yeah, both the sorcerer and the fighter stabilized on their own. All right. They're coming with. Okay. And I guess you're collecting up their fancy gear. Yep. Eventually, uh, Zarwin just slinks off. Okay. Um, when we get inside, uh, Mort finds some of those small cages for animals and tries to stuff them in there. <laughs> sure. You can bring one of the cages down and stick them in the animal yep. pen. That's fine. That's what happens, yeah. Um, Chaga asks you all to gather round. Um, okay. Los goes back into the into his jar. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Chaga has versatile channeler, so he can um, switch his um, his d six negative channel to d six positive. <clears throat> and that's six of them per day. So I think he's nice. going to. In a versatile manner, heal the party while uh, not tagging the Los, even though it won't do anything to him. Yeah. He doesn't want to piss Los off. Uh, and yeah. So 6d6 healing. Oh, you could thank the pattern in the weave. I learned how to turn basically a 1 into a 0, or a 0 into a 1, depending on how you look at it. Anyways, here you go. 18 healing. Nice. So, 
there's still wounds all around, but that uh, yeah. eases your pain a bit. Uh, Barnabas can dish out some uh, healing as well. Uh, Mort's really messed up. Uh, ah, yes, three grease. He's got one uh, first level spell left. Alistair's got... He used two. He's got five. Nine. He's going to heal himself with one, four. And then we'll heal Mort because you did good at killing. I always do good at killing. I'm trying to give you a compliment, Mort. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Four cure light wound spells, seven apiece is um, twenty-eight. Nice. He's got ten damage left. Okay. Then Alistair will just consider that done. Yeah. He goes and raids the pantry for anything chocolate or chocolate or sweet. <clears throat> DM point. Alistair gets a diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, true, Mark. (laughs) (laughs) I will up your diabetes. (laughs) Uh, Okay, yeah, I think uh, we lock the door and rest. Yeah, eventually Junker and Ghost come back like, the fuck happened? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it was attacked a little bit. Uh, these assholes have a bit of gear. I will put it down on your sheet. It won't be part of the downtime that you just finished selling and buying from, as there no. was a considerable amount. But uh, let, me, let me grab the gear and all. Nothing too impressive, although they did have a lot of masterwork stuff. Um. Oh, there is some magic in here. I don't know if there's a lot of stuff that you guys can use, though. We can sell it eventually we'll if we can't use it. So. Yep. I mean, crying out loud, even a suit of full plate, not masterwork, is like, yeah, it's worth stealing because <laughs> selling it. Okay. Uh, the weird things, or the magical things you find, the, um, the guy that you captured, the warrior, had a plus one chain shirt and a plus one cloak of resistance. Uh, hello. His other gear was masterwork. Uh, so were the full plate wearing great sword wielding warriors. The guy who had the plus one chain shirt had under his tongue this weird magical pearl that you were able to kind of fish out of his mouth and kind of pull out and it turned into this weird like reddish looking pearl. Oh, okay. Uh, I think you're able to identify this as a pearl of speech. You put it under your tongue and this specific pearl is in... Uh, um, attuned to infernal huh chaga you speak infernal uh, yes <laughs> he's he's like a little hesitant to admit to it i've dabbled with a few infernal tomes any nice. good, any good um, uh, 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 noble syndicate library has at least a few. Um, More than a few creepy books. I'm sure you've come across Infernal at your university studies. You speak some Infernal poem <laughs> proudly. He doesn't care. <laughs> are you using the the pearl, or are you? No, he know speaks infernal? it because he knows Infernal. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chaga has one rank in linguistics, and it was to learn Infernal. 
Yeah. Ooh. Uh, he he speaks back to you. He gives you a critique of the poem. Yeah. yeah. I think it loses some of its uh, meaning in translation. Hmm. We'll treat this and... as a special mouth slot item. Okay. Uh, maybe one of the others can use it. Oh, yes. Um, Infernal is not the most common of languages. Um, normal peasants, he says, which translates into low on the social hierarchy, uh, <laughs> may not know this tongue. It could be a way for us to communicate um, secretly out in the open. Hiding in plain sight, our intentions could be Agreed. Not unlike a couple of our other friends, he's looking at Junker and Ghost. <laughs> a couple of potions, cure light wounds, left over, and a potion of invisibility. Bracer's armor plus one, a vest plus one, a traveler's any tool, and then some basically junk. Okay. All right. Um, traveler's. What do you do with the? two guys in cages and then the bodies. Oh, we're, we're going to rest. They will be allowed to rest in their cages. Okay. And the next day we'll wake them up and ask them some questions. Yeah, I think Junker and Ghost and the Rat will keep watch given that they didn't uh, they didn't participate in the fight. Mm -hmm. uh, the next morning in front of poem little one, my little one, come with me, your life is done. Forget the future, forget the past, life is over, breathe your last. It's a little dreadful. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah, Ghost will, go, uh, Lois will keep, keep watch over them. We'll put the okay. urn in one room and close the door and, and uh, uh, yeah, the next morning well, when all of you guys pile down for breakfast, uh, I think in some healing. I don't think yes. anyone played doctor, so you get three hit points back that night. No. Seven damage left. Alistair is up in his room. If you don't tell him it's time to talk to or torture the prisoners, he doesn't come down. At the same time, we know he's going to throw a shit fit if he doesn't get to watch. <laughs> All right, we'll, uh, we'll get they, started and then we'll. Have they out. been behaving? I had to come. I had to convince them not to rattle their cages. Oh, good. They're behaving. These ones are dead. Oh, yes, yes, we killed them yesterday, Lois. Don't you remember that? Yes? All right, you can go back to your... Oh, oh all right. Lois just kind of disappears back into his funerary urn. Is anyone still injured? Uh, Mort is still injured. He's still got seven damage. Wow, you got your... Oh, yeah, he got, he, he got it. Bad. Chaga channels three times for six. He will. He's still got four damage. He will channel another time for two. Ugh. All right. That so eight. More. I think he's gonna. Chaga doesn't like having damage, so he's gonna quietly nick a charge from a cure light wounds wand when no one's looking. You know what? Barnabas does want Alistair down here. Okay. You creep up to his room. Yeah. Because uh, on the... Uh, I just probably set my own dog off to that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. We're going to question the prisoners. So you might want to come watch. Come in. And he's grabbing the back of the door... And he's opening it really slowly, but staying behind the door, just to make it creep open. 
Alistair, what, what, what are you doing? Look, I just came to get you because I thought you'd be a bit upset if you missed the uh, interrogation, but it's up to you. Oh, interrogations. <laughs> They're alive, aren't they? I didn't check because I really didn't care. Right. Yeah, they're, they're alive. They almost killed me. Yeah, amongst others. Let's go find out why, shall we? I don't think we should leave. I don't want to be left alone again like that. Well, you had more here, didn't you? What was down in the streets? Three of them came up here and tried to murder me. Well, you could have locked the door. Yes, I guess I could lock the door. But I heard more fighting. I wanted to see. And what did that get you? Almost murdered. Yeah. Never leave the tower. That's not what I'm saying. <sighs> Hello there. He's going to try to intimidate them. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you go have some fun. I'm going to talk to the others. <laughs> Barnabas just closes the door behind him and gives him a bit. Why don't let the boys do his thing before we go in there? A 37 <laughs> on, his, <laughs> on his Intimidate, not 20, 37. <laughs> and despite the size difference, he's got a power that he doesn't take penalties from his side resistance. You actually hear them yelling in their cages. That's how you get him away from us! <laughs> get him away! <laughs> Barnabas opens the door. Oh, what was that? You need get, something from me. Get the creepy kid away from us. Uh, you notice that the executioner sorcerer is actually incapacitated. Oh, no, Alice. Uh, what have you done? But he comes up behind him yep. and puts his hands on his shoulder like a loving father, an appreciative father would. I just touched him in his foot and it turned all black, Daddy. Oh, well, you know, accidents the happen. Fuck? <laughs> the guy's rattling in in the, in the animal cage that he's in. He's trying to get away from Alistair. All right, all right, you get out of hand, and I'll walk out that door again. Oh. What do you want? Let's go. <clears throat> well, my question for you is, we was living here peacefully, and then you come up to our home, Kicking the door in, beating us up. Threatened to collect our heads, did I hear that right? Uh, he, he, he's got nothing. <laughs> right. So the question I, is... I, 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 Ivix, he, he told us to come up here. Him? Yeah, he's... Uh... Uh, magic user. Oh, oh, he told you to. Well, yeah, he's part of our gang. And he's your boss, is he? Uh, sort of. Well, who's his boss? Ah. Uh... You think this boy is the scariest thing we've got in this tower? Would yeah. Like to... Okay. So he starts. He starts rhyming off like half a dozen okay, names. Okay. There we go. <laughs> You've got half a dozen names of leaders of the executioners. Okay. Um, one of the names he gives him when you press on who's this guy's boss, he says the conjurer. The conjurer. Oh. He seems reluctant to give up the conjurer's name. And there's well, no proper name aside from the Conjurer. The Conjurer, that's all you got. Well, let me introduce you to our necromancer. Ah, uh, I don't sound no good. No, um, Chaga? Oh, yes. Can you ask uh, Loche to come visit us? 
<laughs> He's just kind of hugging the uh, <laughs> the funerary urn, and Lois comes out. Hi. Fuck. <laughs> I think the guy is. Gone. I'm just curious to you. What does an afterlife? Um, stuck as a wandering spirit sound like to you. Ah, uh, the, the five faced God will protect me. He protects all men. Not really? To, not Loche? To, not to this one. Ah, look at Loesh is. Okay, okay, what do you want from me? I want names. I gave you names. I want more names. Oh, uh, uh, we we we've got a deal. Here's the deal. So far, you keep talking, I don't hurt you. That's the fucking deal. It, it could tell you more about the conjurer. Could it? Sure. All right then. More. Take him out. Bring him to the kitchen. More turns big. Grabs the cage and just, yeah. And while the, while he's moving him, he's like, "We're gonna make you in a stew." <laughs> no, let me go. I told you what I know. This <laughs> really didn't really uh, affect the Nazumi. They're just there having coffee, <laughs> watching what's going on. Humans are so sad. Don't you think? <laughs> I certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> They're just, they're just watching. Like they, they didn't get attacked. They're, they're it's all smacks of effort. <laughs> Barnabas will uh, average damage to the uh, sorcerer. Uh, heal him for seven. Yep, which is more than the average damage of the corrupting touch. He wakes up. <gasps> wakey, wakey, sunshine. Oh, hell's. No, oh. not quite, but very close. He kind of scrunches up into a ball. Um, in his cage, he has a ready to action. Here's what's going to happen. You cast any sword spell. Swords will light you. You don't need your components, do you? He looks up at Los hovering in the room. Hi. Yeah, it's it's an afterlife of that for you. That's what's going to happen. I, and then he sees Alistair, and he it, like he flinches, <laughs> like he hasn't forgotten. <laughs> no. he, he's still shaking. <laughs> I got a list of names here, and I've got some questions about. He nods. Now, was it your conjurer friend asked you to come here? He. Looks really surprised and then disappointed, and he he nods yeah, his head. He likes the reputation at the tower. Hasn't seen Lars in a while. Was that it? Uh, Lars and the Conjure are old friends. Oh, are they? Rivals, more like. All right. Well, they Lars may have gone. They may have been. Lars is dead. Lars is not dead. Oh. Not quite. Would you like to fucking see Lars? It's a trick question, isn't it? No, no, I think I think I think you'd like to see Lars. Mort, bring the cage. <laughs> Mort comes in, grabs the cage. Uh, Mort doesn't know about the back room. Well, it's time Mort fucking found out, isn't it? Mort's carrying the cage. Uh, if you think this is wise... <laughs> he he kind of whispers to, to Chaga, look, between you and me, most sorcerers ain't that fucking bright. He's not going to know the difference between a lich that got it right and that didn't. They're all mental sorcerers like us. Anyway, if you insist, I don't think we should be going back there. What the fuck? Ghost and Chucker 
now paying attention. Uh, what are you telling Mort to do? Uh, Mort's gonna bring him to the to the door. Okay, which to Mort is a illusory wall. Yeah, just drop it there. Okay, you guys spend about a minute bumbling through the illusory wall that you know is illusory. Yeah. And he just wants to bring... Chained to the wall of the dungeon um, with strange chains that go into vats of this silvery liquid, which you guys a, a while back identified as a custom concoction of... Um, unholy water and mercury that was designed to quicken this man's death as part of his um, attempt to become a lich. He, he's, Barnabas is scanning the guy's face for looking for comprehension of what's going on here. You know, you're dragging, you're dragging the the cage in, kind of. Barnabas. Oh, hello, Master Lord. How are you today? Melafonts. You will call me by my. Death name. My apologies, Master Melifont. Oh, what the... I told you, we had necrom... Oh, I didn't tell you. I'm <laughs> sorry, I told your friend. Yeah, we got a necromancer here now. What have you brought me? Oh, well, your friend, the Conjurer, is looking to take over the tower. <laughs> The Conjurer, he is stunted in his growth. He did not become an Archwizard first. I crossed that finish line first. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's Lars. I told you not to use... My name. Shall, shall I punish him for you, sir? <laughs> no. Let me touch his flesh. You can notice that in the bindings, you can see his little clawed hand moving. Bring him to me. Uh, it, a, a moment, if you please, sire. Um, all I right. have an eternity. Uh, chum, uh, are, are you worth anything to your conjurer? Uh, yes, I, I am. I am a useful servant. Sense motive? Sure. Uh, 33? Wow. I okay. use my linguistics check, and I've got an item that helps my linguistics. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I analyze your language for lie. <laughs> <laughs> your body uh, language tells me you're... <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, his bluff is... Yeah, he's, he's important. You can ransom me. 24. Um, You didn't see... I don't know. It's like you didn't see a terrible amount of impressive spells. They're all spells that you and your party can cast. Um, yeah. He he's claiming he's useful because maybe he does tasks. Okay. In a similar Here's manner that you might, you know, like like yeah, I'm useful. My my master will 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 ransom me. Pay oh. ransom. Yeah. Oh, and then spellcasters tend to be useful. Bring him here, and I will put him on ice for you. <laughs> As you wish, Master. It won't kill you. <laughs> he brings the cage towards okay. Lars, or Malifont. <laughs> uh, 
what is Barnabas's strength? He is going to get Mort to do it. All right, Mort, don't fucking freak out. Here's what we're doing. Ah! Yeah, it takes Mort a minute to get through the illusory spell. Yeah. Uh, to get right. through the permanent illusion, blocking the library. He carefully just, like, drops the cage. By... Hey, you notice that the lich's finger reaches out and kind of noodles in towards the guy, and a single clawed fingernail touches the man, and the man goes... <laughs> like... Whoops, as I break my connection. Nope. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, he, he goes, um, rigor mortis, board like straight and stiff. You still see his eyes moving around, but it doesn't look like he can speak. All right, take him back. Barnabas. Yes, uh, Master Melaphon. You and your friends will go and strike this conjurer down. Yeah, well, actually, that, that is on the agenda now, yeah. As you wish. <laughs> Here is a conjurer of foolish tricks his magic is not true wizardry noted he likes to wear masks but he cannot hide his weakness Noted. <laughs> you have my permission and command to kill the Contra. Well, I will be done then, my lord. And he gives a bow. <laughs> His ring shall be brought to me. We will put plans in motion. You will see know. What you will know it, as it looks similar to the Bellefont ring of summoning that is upon your finger. I'm just keeping it safe, my lord, until your condition is fixed. Yes, unless you wish to give me my ring back. No. Well, I would, my lord, but I think it's best I keep it because I can actually see out the windows at what's coming. You could always take off these chains. Oh, it's a bit of a, a thing with that. Is there? There's a process to it. And I don't want to bugger it up. He's lying, of course. So. <laughs> I think liches get like a plus eight to sense motive. It's like... Prove your worth, Barnabas. <laughs> Did get a 30 on that lie, my <laughs> Prove your worth, Barnabas. And I will not destroy you when I get out of this. Thank you for that opportunity, Master Melaphon. Kill the conjurer. conjurer. See, here's the thing. <laughs> Barnabas gets out of there and is really worried. <laughs> All right, so this conjurer fella. Oh, fuck these guys, right? More, put him out back in the pen. <laughs> Or throws this guy back in the okay. uh... <laughs> Here's the thing with this conjurer fella. Apparently, Lars became an archmage before the conjurer. Does anyone have knowledge local or knowledge arcana? Barnabas does, and he has, he has both. 
right. Give me a, a roll from either. I will go with uh, Arcane, because I know it's better. Uh, and if it's about the Conjurer, I want to know as much as I can. So I'm probably going to end up spending a Inspiration Point. I'm going to do it anyway, despite my awesome... Apparently I can think like an... I, I can recall knowledge like nothing and lie like nothing, but I can't fight where shit. <laughs> So that's a total of 38. Okay, if you spent a fortune point, which you have one for tonight, that would be a 40. I will take that 40 to learn as much as I can about this foe. This is Knowledge Arcana. This is Knowledge Arcana. Yeah, the Conjurer is um, um, is known to people in the South Wall District. He is a uh, he went to university with Lars Belafont in a similar way that you went to university with Chaga. Mm -hmm. uh, they both studied magic. Lars was a wizard and uh, Lars of Lich Belafont is correct. He had a different type of summoning conjuring magic and he's a summoner. Um, so his spell's not so scary. It's the monster he calls up like that that frightens the crap out of you. Yes. Um, he has something called the Shadow Pet. The Shadow Pet, okay. Uh, he also supplies several of the gangs with magical masks and hoods and okay. is basically on good terms with the executioners and the um, uh, the crypt garden mummers. Okay, so yeah. he's not actually a gang member. He is an associate, like uh, associate of the gang. Well, associates probably. Yeah, he's made peace with the two I'm... gangs because yeah. his house lies halfway between those two neighborhoods. Okay, uh, and it's actually called the Conjurer's House. It, there's a basically a mansion where he lives, uh, and he dabbles in weird mask magic um, when he goes about the city he wears this mirrored mask like they, like people have forgotten what he really looks like okay well that should still make him fairly identifiable yep uh, you know that people don't rob his house because it's got a uh, um, there's something about the masks in his house that are enchanted. Like they, they, there's a guardian okay. aside from the shadow pet that lurks in his mansion. You with your 40 know that he isn't 11th level, but he's okay. at least ninth. You've got a, you've got a, he's, he's name level, but not, yeah. not quite legendary. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to fight a ninth level. I don't want to fight this guy. <laughs> oh, but his stuff would be so great. <laughs> for, for a bunch of third, borderline fourth level characters? Yeah, basically ninth level mage gear or tenth level mage gear. <laughs> Plus a mansion full of junk. Yeah. Okay. I think we have to level up once before we go after this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Might be wise. Uh... All right, here's our options. We can send these two back, where this one has a warning not to fucking come back, because he ain't never walking again unless they find, uh, unless they care to cast some spells on him. And I doubt they will. And he, he says that right into his ear. What do you mean? He's all sort of... He looks... Oh, uh, remember when I told you not to let the lich touch you? Uh, he, he's, he's awake, but he can't do anything. And 
Fucking Alistair's poking him in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, take some scissors. You can cut his fucking ear off. He's not going to do nothing about it. Can I? Well, let's see. Uh, do you have any objections? He's <laughs> straight to his face. I don't hear a no. Okay, Alistair is like looking around for scissors and Chaga just puts a hand on him and he's like, no, he's not going to let you <laughs> cut the dude's ear off. The bottom okay. is it! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I don't run with these. These are very sharp. <sighs> Ghost and Junker have stopped laughing at Alistair. Like, there's been a subtle change since the um, uh, since the time out into the woods. They used to think the kid was funny. Mm -hmm. They don't anymore. Okay. In fact, they they've been kind of avoiding Alistair. Like, it it's, it, it it's hard to blame them. Yep. Well, you know, Charlie, if you're going to act like a savage, you're going to get treated like one. Well, perhaps you could just leave him on ice or whatever, alive until we've dealt with the conjurer. He might be able to tell us more about the conjurer. Him? Oh, I know plenty. I think more specific things like the secret knock at the door or, you know, is the welcome mat trapped? What sort of things they have in the pantry. Mm. He, for, he, he was with him till the, till the pantry thing. He's like, what? <laughs> Ch he realized that was just Chaga's peckishness. <laughs> He's peckish. It's, it, it, it's tea time. And he just comes back out with like a bowl of snacks. <laughs> right. Keep well, let's eyes. ask his friend first. Keep up my strength. Uh, we can take him out of the cage now because he's paralyzed. Yep. He is not going anywhere. And Mort will drop his uh, on the wrong sheet. No, I, yeah, I didn't mean to grab everybody there, but Mort just drops him from behind. Limp. Oh, don't worry. He's not dead. You let me go. I, I told you all I know. Oh, I've got more questions. All right. How much is he worth? I don't know. They, they probably pay a bag of gold for his return. Same with me. Two bags for of both. gold. For both of you. It's a bag of, bag of gold. After you tell me, the conjurer, he sent you? Well, conjurer talked to uh, Ivix here. Ivix came to us, said there was a job it was going to pay. Besides, this tower is in our territory. <laughs> Sounds like he's getting ready to be hit. <laughs> Oh, is it now? I guess not. He kind of stares at his shoes when he says yeah, that. Yeah, sure. I fucking know. All right, so you're nothing is what I'm getting. A, a bag of gold. At least 50. No, 100. He has only been in the front in the front lobby. I tell you what. Uh, you let me go. I'll tell... He says one of the names of what has to be one of his lieutenants or captains yeah. or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him that, that you're willing to ransom him and that we owe you a bag of gold. Hell, you got our equipment that's worth more than a bag of gold. 
Yeah, no, that's um, fair. Okay, no. You just dropped it in the street. After that, it's for anyone's to pick up, isn't it? <sighs> yeah. Hey, we, you got more heads than us. <laughs> but we do now. Look, I, what else do you want? I want some kind of guarantee you're not coming back. Yeah, you'll have to have a sit down. All right, you sit tight. I can arrange that. Just let me go. I'll tell them you need want to sit down. Your name's uh, Barney. Yeah, it's fucking Barney. You can call me the professor. Professor, huh? Yeah, that's right. You're like a wizard apprentice, huh? That's right. Yeah, they, they'll talk to you. With your crazy sense motive. He's pretty much saying anything to get out of here. You sit tight for a bit. We'll have a chat with the others. Uh, knowledge local. Who were the gangs on the adjoining? I know Mark knows that. Uh... Yeah, knowledge local. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember now if it's plus. Oh, it is plus 11. Okay. Uh, I am going to spend a another inspiration. So the shitty roll for a twenty-two total. Okay, what? Which you're trying to identify gangs? What neighborhood? gangs are? Do we sit on the borders of? Uh, okay, so you know that there is. I know they're saying that we're in their territory, but we're. Uh, you, you with a twenty-two, you understand that the tower lies on the border between four neighborhoods. Okay. And that it's unlikely that this legendary wizard was part of a gang. He may have had relationships with some of the gangs that ran the streets, but okay, there are no obvious signs of it. Um. Which neighborhood was that? Well, I guess you're like, which territory do we belong to? It's it's contested. It's debatable. It's really. contested, as in, yeah. Probably all four gangs claim the tower, and nobody has the strength to keep it. Now you need to give me an. A, a, you know the executioners are in Crow's Nest. Yes, we know that. And now you have like uh, a half dozen names of like captains and leaders and. Uh, yeah. you, you, he were also told that they have a deal and you not to, you didn't explore that too much. Uh, give me a knowledge arcana and a knowledge local for the gargs. Okay. Knowledge arcana. 35. Uh, the gargoyle gate bridge is a magical bridge. It's mm -hmm. sort of an. It's sort of a thing that was crafted by some insane wizard long ago that spawns gargoyles. Wait, it, it like creates gargoyles? Yep. As in, slowly over time, gargoyles grow on the bridge and then they animate and they've always had a gargoyle problem with that bridge and that might be considered a gang. Okay. Um, you don't want to go across the bridge at night noted um uh, yeah basically people don't travel that that bridge at night okay uh and then your knowledge local uh 16 i'm running out of these you're pretty I will... oh, go ahead i will use one more inspiration okay so 22 yeah you've met them and you seem to be on okay terms remember the kenku that were yeah. running around they are the talons the kenku do have non kenku with them but it is a family and clan of kenku that basically or several clans of kenku that run the gang in uh uh that district 
the Kenku don't get along with the gargoyles. And why you don't hear a lot about them is that they they fight over the streets at night in the gargs. Okay. Uh, if you meet a Kenku, you could, while it's somewhat, might be rude, it's like the Kenku are probably clannish enough that they've all ganged together for survival. And, okay. and like, at least they might be related to actual gang members. Um, Who are the biggest enemies of the executioners, I guess? Or most militant, I suppose. Sure. Knowledge local? Oh my god! 12. I've got no idea, probably. Um, people tend to not mess around with these guys. You're no, not I sure. can see why. <laughs> You're not too sure why. Aside from them being big and brutish and like fearsome in that they collect heads. Uh, with your 12, you're guessing that the two gangs that don't interact very much probably are the Menace and the uh, and the Executioners. They probably... They're of the same temperament. You don't know what their relationship is, though. Okay. Uh, a roll for the foreign market. Foreign market. I got a 17. Hobgoblins. There's right. a whole culture of hobgoblins. These are the people that the Imperium have somewhat conquered. They're warlike. If they run gangs, it runs deep along racial lines. And yeah, it's also a place you don't want to be out at night. Their markets are pretty safe, though, in the, in, in the day. Okay. And then the old stacks. Hey, Drickster. Oh, 29. Uh, the old stacks um, has been a fighting ground for a long time. And you know that recently the rats of the old stacks were wiped out by the fey backed uh, Steel Rose Watch. The little blue fairy that Chaga talked to, yeah, that guy's the that guy's the leader. Okay. With a twenty nine, you do know that the Fey have. It's like the other gangs take their turns trying to take over this neighborhood, and it's been mm -hmm. kind of a fighting over what little resources that are here. Okay. All right. Um, all four of those neighborhoods probably claim this patch of land because it's on a bit of a height and then there's a wizard tower. It's like something worth fighting over. There's the, the player in me wants to connect us to Steel Rose, but at the same time with the information you've given me, like Barn was like, I would, I'd rather stick with someone like a stable group that the guards won't, are, are of no use. Hobgoblins, I don't know if they might be kind of screwed here. The menace or hobgoblins, I don't think we can really trust them. The talons. Talons, you got the sense that they were they were skirmishing with the executioners, so they they may not yeah, like the executioners. They won't. They don't take territory. They just keep their own. Right now is probably what they do. Yep. So it might actually be the Steel Rose is the. If we want someone to. Back us. The uh, the destruction of the rats is recent. It happened like during your downtime. Okay, so this is way back. <laughs> I'm trying to think, did we even have the backing of? Uh... I 
can't remember if we were backed by the Briars then or not. I don't think we were, were we? Uh, it it that also happened. So in a very short order, you we pissed off the going back. Belichick showed up. We got pissed off, and then we went into the Underdark and pissed on it, pissed in his cornflakes, and then we went, oh, we we did a bad thing, and then we went whining to the Briars for help, and the Briars moved into our neighborhood. We had just we had just taken the rat den. So this is all this that happened while you guys were out in the woods and during your downtime, like that's where we are in the uh okay. in the timeline. So the Fay the Fay have just like declared old stacks theirs. Okay. And then there's this Steel Rose watch, whatever that means. And the little blue guy that was bragging to Chaga you piece together is the uh Yeah. Talon's kind of like you guys. Yeah, well, as in, they, you guys didn't attack each other. They saw you attacking the executioners. They haven't come rudely to the tower doors yet. The, ex the executioners came with a hit squad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh Okay. Well, you you spent a little bit of the day healing, resting, and no. um, uh, you interrogated uh, your prisoners, and you introduced one of them to the lich in your basement. Yeah. We'll say that this day is done. I'm gonna check XP to see if there's enough XP, oh, to, that, yeah. XP to level. Okay, uh, who did you guys defeat? Um, I'm going to give you a CR2 for getting rid of your blindness, uh, as it's like something you overcame. Even though it's with money, it was you know, bad. Uh, let's see, the CR... Four sorcerer, the falchion fighter was a CR three. The two warriors were CR two. The two thugs that you sent running, your CR halves. Uh, dealing with the neutral NPC, Zarwin. Um, his name has some tongue-in-cheek meaning. Um, CR3, and then a little bit of C XP for... Oops. Uh, for interrogations. Is it clues? I'm going to give you a tiny boost to the XP because you guys were that encounter was definitely you guys not on the equal footing <laughs> let's get them one at a time <laughs> yeah yeah somebody must have been watching the tower watching you guys go to and fro like yeah, I'll laugh. let's go a bunch of busy yeah. oh mark look at this <laughs> Are we just short this is funny this is how much xp you have oh, wait, 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 wait xp this is what you need You can you can have the thirty. You, you... Um, I think the next thing you guys are going to do is start to train for your level, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah, we need our level. 
this brings up an interesting point. Who trains you? Um, yeah, it is a good point. Barnabas can't go to Barnabas is going to do knowledge locals. We'll see if he can find trainers for people. How about that? Yep. Uh, one roll for each character, or, or just one roll, or um, give me a second. I'm gonna write down all the characters. Uh, Los, I'm gonna say is just learning to be a ghost in his cage he doesn't That's actually fair. gain anything by going up his level except uh he still has to pay for his ghost template yeah. what he does gain is an extra d6 on his um his negative energy attack like it's effectively uh, what he got from leveling um so that's nothing to laugh at yeah go uh, go so he he trains in the urn uh chaga a fighter and sorcerer or one or the other he is a sorcerer cleric with a single level of fighter, and he's not going up any more levels of fighter. Okay, he just wanted it for the. So he needs a divine trainer or a arcane trainer. Hey, Barnabas, I have a, a weird idea. This may be dangerous. What do you say? Oh, we have a lich in the basement. Couldn't he run a class or two about Orcana? Does seem like it would be a pity to waste such a resource, wouldn't it? Yes, we just would have to get into the habit of not touching him and we'll having to look at his horrific aura. He All right. was a friend of mine, perhaps getting him into the idea that we are, you know, friendly. Keep I him... believe he prefers servants. Yes. We are servants looking after his tower while he's in his predicament. Sure. I'm all right with that. It's not, as long as we don't make any mistakes in accidentally releasing. He is a wizard. He could teach, well, you, me, Alistair, Ghost. I'm comfortable with it. Yeah, all right. If you're in, I'm in. <laughs> Learning from a lich. Oh, it's a rare opportunity. Really is. Yeah. They're not known to keep a lot of apprentices. <laughs> Junker. I've got someone. I'll find him. All right, Junker. It leaves Mortimer. He can, either, he's got an art, well, alchemist or fighter. Alchemist can be trained by wizards. Okay. Okay. He will. I'll fit in with the with the with the dead guy. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to spend a DM I'll point the whole to say party <laughs> I'm learning from a, the lich. I'm going to spend a DM point to say that the lich is well. As long as you act like you are subservient to him, that he is willing to teach you some things about magic. And about how to progress. Okay. Um, the Lich is thoroughly convinced, though, that you are his minions, and we must behave accordingly. <laughs> and it fully expects that you're going to let him out soon. Okay. Uh, he does threaten you guys that if you don't let him out soon, he's going to be really angry, and he will make those who are disloyal suffer. But the whole cadre of arcane casters do receive strange and horrifying but effective lessons. Okay, this is the party. <laughs> From Malafont the Dreadmoth, formerly, <laughs> formerly Chaga's, uh, uh, well, master for a time, yep. 
this man helped Chaga understand his mental uh, his mental sorcery. Uh, so he kind of like it slips back in. So you've come to the to the bony foot of your master, Chaga. Oh yes, Master um, uh, Malifont. Yes. There is no way our story would convince any anyone that we are anything other than a group of horrible people. <laughs> what have you done? Well, we fought um, a unicorn, killed it, took a torn as a trophy, fought some woodland creatures. We killed them. They were just cute little pumpkin people. And uh, we're learning from a lich, uh, magic from a lich, and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, we're bad people. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's a bunch of neutrals in this room. <laughs> yep. There's no goods. No goods would stick there's around. There's one there. evil. Uh, Alistair just soaks up anything he can learn oh. from this from this lich, and and it, it's like this perverse classroom with hands that go up and, and questions, <laughs> and uh, a great amount of respect for the lich that you aren't helping free, but seem to be willing to pump for information in this grisly classroom setting uh at fourth level you spend five days training uh with the uh with the lich okay during that five day time um junker is gone he has gone off to perhaps seek out the the urban druid that he originally received training from. Although, you know what? Junker's a vivisectionist. He can learn from... He's fucking sitting in the classroom learning. <laughs> whole, whole group. We all want to learn from you, Master Lich. <laughs> <laughs> the paladin's kicking the door. It's not what it looks like. <laughs> He's just teaching us. <laughs> oh, this is this is hilarious <laughs> and so dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, the man that was paralyzed, uh, you learn, is the par the paralysis is permanent. Yep. Um, well, burn to do that. Yeah. Yep, and you have to feed you have to feed him and and water him to keep him alive. Los might as well participate in lessons because he he is a sorcerer <laughs> and, and 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 dead. Yep. Maybe the undead can teach the undead something. Uh, the lich is quite impressed with the studious nature of his new minions, um, and if you get him going off on tangents, um, Malifont thinks that you will be part. You will have special places in part of the second phase of the rule of the of the Malifont Tower. Okay. Um, give me a sense motive or a bluff. Uh, I will do a sense motive because that is my better roll. 24. Okay. Uh, the, 25 if it's... I've the, got my new level yet or... Malifont the Dreadmoth has um, plans for the tower uh, and he lets slip that um, once he is free the construction will will resume. Maybe we will work for a lich if we make the tower bigger. <laughs> construction oh very nice chuck just looks at at barnabas like what are we actually doing <laughs> you have the contract with someone with that or we could look into that for you it is beyond you you have much to learn of course master of course Yes, where was I? If you divide the constant, 
by the number of targets, you shall achieve the maximal amount of power, but only within six paces. Okay. Mortimer, are you writing this down? Uh... Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Construction sounds pretty neutral, right, guys? <laughs> oh, it's going to go for two days. It'll be fine, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you, you guys are keeping the prisoners. Uh, the, uh, the executioners don't come back for their men. Um, how are you disposing of the bodies? Oh, um, right. shove them down the sewers. Oh, you know what? We're going to have, uh, we're going to throw them in our cart okay. and dump them on the edge of the executioner territory. All right. Uh, what do you do with your two executioner prisoners? Uh, Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll send a, a message that we'll ransom them off. Okay, who writes the message? Barnabas. Give me a diplomacy. Or an intimidate. Or, or I've got whatever. a cat actually tapping me on the shoulder <laughs> like, you should feed me now. Oh, I see what you you, you should feed me, that's what she's saying. Um, All right. So 18 on the diplomacy check. <clears throat> Okay, during that five days, um, you send letters back and forth. They're willing to give you uh, 40 gold pieces for the warrior and 120 gold pieces for their tiefling. Yeah, it's fine. He, we accept that. Okay. Uh, you return them and they do, they do pay. Uh, um, the, the warrior gets a warning. Uh, if I see either your faces anywhere near this fucking tower it's the end you understand that uh, yeah he doesn't want anything to do with the wizards yeah I'm gonna feed you the fucking mole Zarwin <laughs> Zarwin's the one that, re that, that exchanges their money huh? 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 here you go payment yeah. Don't hit yeah. Sawin. He pays. Never, never attack the payer. Huh? Just give me the fucking coins. Here you go. And he's just got the warrior carrying the. Uh... Oh, and let the conjurer know that Master Melifon said that's what happens to those who invade his tower. Who me? Pointing at the paralyzed guy. Yeah, he, the, the warrior carries the paralyzed uh, yeah. uh, tiefling. Uh, message is sent. Give me an intimidate. You can add four. Uh, I think I suck at intimidate. Uh, marks. Oh, shoot. Uh, am I using... I don't even know. Hang on. Intimidate is terror. Oh, that's right, because that's what I was going to increase. Yeah, that's my next one. Oh, versatile performance? You're not spending the... No, it, it's... Um, I only get to pick one at a time, but they all come off linguistics. Mm. And it's a, it's a different list. Like I, I think I can take profession scribe and heal and use linguistics. Eight. I get anyway. I did get a twenty one on the intimidate. Yeah, they 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 seem to get the message. Uh a couple more days into the training. Uh it's raining that day. Mm -hmm. And you just spot Zarwin underneath the uh the cover of in front of the doorway. 
He's just sitting out there. Okay. Um, Barnabas will hold his temper. <laughs> okay. Zawin. Huh? Oh. Huh? Why are you here? Zawin noticed mice. Uh, you want? He's a little dangling mouse. Zawin, you have seconds mere seconds to give me a reason not to call more to beat you into a bloody pulp how many what huh one okay 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 ah uh, sarwin told by executioners uh that sarwin uh get his head uh cut off huh what uh, if you go back there, they think that Zawin uh, led them into trap. Zawin did not. But then Zawin remembered there was a mice under your stoop. Zawin only needs uh, sc scrap here, scrap there. Huh? Oh. He, he reacted to like a like a little, little roll of thunder. <laughs> okay. Zawin, you need to find somewhere else to live. Ah, uh, no lift, just rest. Uh, wait for rain. Stop. Oh, let me make this painfully clear then. More! <laughs> he eats he, he, the, uh... Ah, uh, Zawin! Uh, Zawin, go. Uh, Zawin, help. Zawin, good at uh, going there and doing thing and then coming back and doing thing. Zawin. Sees lots. Who oh, does Zawin now? What was Zawin seen? Oh, uh, I would find interesting. Nothing. Lots of things. Uh, what you want Zawin to see? Another boom of thunder. Huh? Oh. Tell you what, Zawin. I might, just might, be able to find a use for you. And for that, you may sneak all the mice from under my stoop that you wish. Oh, okay. Zawin will remember your kindness. Don't get too nosy around my front door, though. You understand? Oh, yes. Good. Zawin, stay here? No, Zawin finds somewhere else to sleep. But you can come by. Okay. Zawin, go now? Um, yeah. Now. Well, uh, Tell you what, you can wait till the rain clears out. Okay, huh? Oh, oh, oh. But keep it down. I don't want to hear you. That's a good, good lad. <laughs> so, so it sits on your front porch for a while. <laughs> Uh, eventually he does leave uh, the group of you are kind of at recess we'll call it mm -hmm. uh, Alistair retreated are we we're one of those times we have to remind our our teacher we're not all <laughs> undead we need a break <laughs> yeah uh, yeah they, everyone's a little bit kind of tired and a little bit flustered and sort of put off by the your teacher is an evil bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's probably not that encouraging kind of teacher. <laughs> well, that's not exactly what I wanted to know. Yes, I, I know, Junker. It's, 
the lesson's going a completely different way than I expected. Maybe we should try to get him on track again. Magical theory. Magical theory. All right. The right sequence of questions might be able to do that. If we ask him more about the constants of the weave versus... Hey, what was that you were talking about before? Alistair Nexus Point? Something like that? Uh, Alistair went up to his room. What the fuck? Is he going to bed already? Oh, yeah, I guess he's looking outside. <laughs> I guess it's getting night. Birds. Yeah, I was going to say, are there seagulls out your window? Or... Yeah, man, I got my window open, and uh, the water the water of uh, Puget Sound is, you know, like 10 blocks mm -hmm. away kind of thing. And, and there be gulls. Cool. Uh, you notice Junker pick up his rat, tuck him underneath his arm, kind of like you've seen him do this with when he's combative. Mm-hmm. And he's growling at the window. You see something out there? Ah, uh, something flew around up there. All right, let's just pretend we're being attacked again, just in case. Uh, Barnabas cast major armor. Yeah, you, you've got three rounds of spells to go up. Mage armor. Uh, shield. Misspelled, apparently. <laughs> uh, Mort is going to take his mutagen and put up a shield spell. Okay, everyone's slowly getting up and having a look around. Um, you actually see the handle of your front door mm -hmm. kind of go like this, like someone's jiggling it quietly. The door is locked, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, actually, mortal from a small size move in and then just grow and wait at the door <laughs> okay ready to action to smash whatever malcontent is behind that door all right you can actually hear whispering more what languages do you speak uh more does not have that many languages under his belt I believe he speaks gnomish Gnome, Aklo, and Trade Common. Okay. Well, it's none of those. Okay. Uh, there it seems to be two male voices and one higher pitch female voice. Okay. They're whispering. He does. He does point to the others and goes. Just let them know there's three. Um. He, he patiently waits. Yep. Uh, Junker casts some spells on his rat. Los is out. Uh ghost cast a defensive spell so did chaga barnabas will actually wait back here i think
there comes a point where if it takes too long, Mort gets bored and just unlocks the door okay. quietly. But uh, let's see. Uh, the higher of the two rolls, uh, Mort unlocks the door before they decide to knock. Um, so Mort's roll, and they're okay. So Mort, you unlock the door, and two of these creatures hop back. They are. Uh, let me put them down relative to you guys. They're small. They're almost as wide as they are um, tall. They have little goatee legs and ropes uh, that seem to um, be animate and moving along their hands. They're held in coils. They have clubs. They're uh, dreadlock style um, uh, and braided Maybe. beards are also sort of moving and animate. They hop back like they're uh, like they're surprised that you're there. <laughs> Um, Mort have knowledge of nature? No. You hear one of them say, Spriggan! Spriggan! You can hear something fluttering around, but you can't see it. Okay. Hello? Denizens of Bellaful Tower. Mortal step out. What do you want? He's looking around. <laughs> we are checking in on checking in on a neighbor. Is there a wizard named Bellafont that lives here? Not anymore. Oh, well that's interesting. May we speak to the master of the tower? Uh. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Sticks his head in. Hey, who wants to be the master of the tower? Because I don't want it. I don't want that job. Chaga looks over the Barnabas. Ghost looks right, up at Barnabas. You're the master of the tower if you fucking won't. <laughs> We can't let Metaphont be talking to the neighbors. You can hear something fluttering around. It's annoying. You can't see it, Mort. Hey, that's close enough. Hey. Uh, let's club out. <laughs> yeah, they got their clubs out. Oh, easy, boys. Easy. We don't want any. We don't want any violence here, if we can avoid it. All right, paper, rock, scissor. <laughs> it's good chaga. Oh, I think tower shield beats all three. Oh, fuck off. He kind of pushes you with the tower shield towards the door. Hey, ah, it's... Ahem. Straightens and coat out. Chaga will go out, but he steps mm. off to the side. Who is looking for the uh, master of Bellafort Tower? I am. You hear this disembodied voice. It's small. Uh, there's these two goatee creatures that look really like on edge because of Mort. Uh, if everyone could put their clubs away, that would be nice. Oh, well, put your club away. They're just little. Yeah. <laughs> Mort puts his club away. <laughs> oh, they're kind of little. I'll show him little. That one's pretty big, though. Yeah, spriggin. They're speaking in Sylvan. Uh, yeah, he speaks. Uh, Barnabas speaks that. Okay. Hush. You are the master of the tower. So to speak, yeah. So you could tell that there's something just fluttering in front of you. You Would see... you mind terribly appearing before me? I'd like to look you in the eye. I'd like to know your name first. People call me the Professor. Okay. Um, a pink-haired fairy uh, is standing before you, or hovering before you. And your name? 
Her name is Abel. Well, it seems like a peaceful. Would you like to come in for a drink? No. Name Levi. <laughs> that cat. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> The cat said, feed me now. <laughs> that was very much a <laughs> fucking knocking things off of tables. <laughs> fucking cat was cat knocked cat? A, um, a cup down from a windowsill yep. and it was full of these little stones so it just they went everywhere oh fuck anyway sorry where were we you're the master of the tower I speak for the group my name is Bell I come from the Sylvan Acres you're a ways away Yes. Are you with the uh, fairies that took over? Mm. Took over what? Um, what would, would they call themselves? Steel Rose Watch. Are you with them? We support the Steel Rose Watch and what they represent. And then what is that? They're a watch. A watch? Yes. They will make they will make the old stack safe for Fey folk to live. Well, it's very nice for Fey folk, I suppose. And we don't have any here, though. And the residents of the old of the old stacks. Has it now? Yes. Well. There was a wizard that lived here in this tower. A Lars Belafont. Is yes. Does he live here? You will no longer find anyone who goes that by that name here in the tower. Oh. My condolences. Are you the rightful are you the rightful owner of the tower? Well, thus far uncontested. You know how the law can be. Yes. An interesting turn of phrase. Do you owe allegiance to anyone? Well, I feel a particular fondness and bond with me, ma'am. Sure of that, not particularly, no. Um, let me rephrase. The neighbourhoods are run by different groups. We wish to know if you're affiliated with any of these groups. We are not. I see. Independence. She looks up at, uh, at... <laughs> Do I know you? She's looking up at Mort. Mort does Mort recognize her? Ah, this is a fairy. fairy. How would I know you? People are always invisible. Ah, <laughs> uh, but we are. The world is a scary place. Not because everyone's invisible. Yes. Hello there. Oh, hello. Are you one of Dugenschmerf's uh, uh, watch? Women. <laughs> Dugenschmerf is the leader of the Steel Rose Watch. He runs that neighborhood. You ought to behave and to listen to him as if he were the sheriff, if you catch my meaning. Oh, I see. So are we under the protection of this watch then? You can be. Because you should know that your um, neighbors, other neighbors, 
executioners seem to think that this tower falls within their territory. We have many grievances with the executioners. They have killed too many. Well, it's not surprising the way they go about collecting heads. They also maintain a cold iron guillotine, which is an affront to us. <laughs> Mort shoves his <laughs> club a little bit farther down in the pack. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well. Should you choose to wish protection... From the Sylvan Acres, we should bring the master of this tower to visit Mulberry Nighthorn. He is our leader in the Sylvan Acres. Uh, knowledge local, Mulberry Nighthorn? Sure. Uh, new or old? Um... Are you guys finish your train? Okay, so... Uh... I see it's twelve for now. We'll see if I might put more into it after I actually do the so AC uh AC twenty eight on the roll. Yeah, you've heard the name before. Uh while it's technically some priest of or sorry, druid or priest of Sylvanus, which is a god that dutifully serves the five face god uh in bringing order to nature. Um uh, the real leader of the Fey people in the reserve is Mulberry Nighthorn. Uh, you think you'd be delving into definitely gangland politics? We're already neck deep in it now, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not the type of, like, you wouldn't you're going to end up paying more than you receive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's just how desperate are you to... Yeah. The fair, well, the fair long lived and it's not a good idea for most humans to make packs or bargains with the fae. It, right. it either is because they're chaotic natures or they're going to they're gonna stick it to you. I will tell you what. You can tell Mr. Nighthorn that while we are very grateful for an offer of protection, we are quite capable of protecting ourselves. I see. We are, however, a uh, industrious group that would be available for work, the type of which he is known for wherein perhaps a fay best not be seen doing it. Ah. I am not permitted to make any special arrangements. No, of course you're not. I am simply extending an offer after you were so kind to extend one of your own. Yes. The terms that I was permitted to give you is that we would extend protection to include the Bellefonte Tower and its residents in exchange for a 6,000 gold pieces payment per season. We'll take care of our own protection. We also... And she turns invisible. are here to inform you that if you form a pact with any of the other gangs of the, of the South Wall District, it would be considered an act of war against the Sylvan Acres. Oh, is that fucking so? It is. Well, that is duly noted. If you would like a special discount dispensation or a special arrangement you can and you get the sense she flutters near the ground she puts something down on the ground and it appears it's like a little scroll the scroll looks like more like it's like a leaf wrapped up though 
present right. this to a fay at the Sylvan Acres, and you'll be given safe passage to and from the tower through the old stacks to speak with Mulberry Nighthorn. Well, it's very generous if you and Mage hands it up to his hand. <laughs> Well, we are happy that there is no violence here this evening. Well, we are not a violent people. I know this may seem strict and harsh, but there is a conflict brewing in Southwall District. You don't want to be on the losing side. Well, it seems to me best way to not be on the losing side is don't pick one. Hmm. It is unfortunate. The three of you, I will report, are worth dealing with. Well, I'm going to bid you good night, dear Bell. Good night, Professor. And excuse me, I have studies to return to. I did not catch you the rest of your names. No, I don't suppose you did. And he just kind of shoves, like, kind of non verbally, like, <laughs> yeah. get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> get back in there before you say too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jaga trundles in, he kind of. Gives a short bow and Mort squeezes his big ass in there. Good yep. evening. He tips his hat. <laughs> Good evening to you, Professor. We'll hope that this is a good first step forward, as you humans say. As do I. They're, yeah, you are they're, behind them. they're grumbling in Sylvan, the two the two goatee creatures like I could have taken them. Yeah, I could have taken them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should leave. Quiet, did you? Well, I think it's safe to say we're gonna be watched for the next little while. Ooh, are those Dugan Schmiffs, Faye? I didn't get quite an answer from Who's this Say, Nighthorn? Oh, he runs unofficially the Sylvan Reserve. Is it a place with trees? Uh, uh yeah. Ooh. All right. He runs a park. So what? Well, he's kind of the spokesperson for the Fay of the area. We getting into a fight? <laughs> this ghost. Yeah. Um, no, uh, it's not the plan. It was uh, offering protection. We seem well, to be doing well on our own. That's why I told her we're not paying 6,000 gold pieces. Protection we don't need. Certainly not 6,000 a season. Fucking highway robbery. It is a bit much. I did, however, offer our services. Mr. Nighthorn is known to have deep pockets. Have you ever met this man? Creature? Nope. Thing? But if I ever do wish to meet him, I'll have this still. No, I'm going to put that on my character sheet now. Sure. It is the Sylvan Leaf of Peace. Hmm? The Sylvan Leaf of Peace. Sylvan Leaf of Peace. Alright. Oh, it looks like a spring roll. It's not. <laughs> Part of it. <laughs> Chugging. <laughs> looking at it greedily. <laughs> Okay. Like it was pizza, and you were sitting across from Marty eating a slice. He'd be like, "Ooh, 
<laughs> Chaga is my spirit animal. <laughs> okay. I gotta level my characters still. Yeah, I, I'm gonna do that probably tonight. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I can't wait to level these guys. These guys are so fun. Yeah, uh, I know. I imagine without leveling, you're not going to go and try to attack the conjurer's house. No, no, we're, or we're or, or wait around for uh, when um, the nighthorn obviously hears. We'll probably hear the "How did it go?" kind of thing. Yeah. Um, this is the same time where the Fey are spreading out the neighborhood and they're guarding the edges of the neighborhood. There was a delegation yeah. that was sent to go. No, and check it does make sense. That yeah. they show. Yep. That could have been a fight. Like you guys. Could have let Mort out there to continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> I win. And then, and then Pixies would have been used against you. <laughs> yeah. And you go to sleep, and you go to sleep, and you go to sleep. So uh, Adam and I chatted about Pixie Dust. Uh, we decided to limit it to once per round. That yeah, kind of makes sense. And then limit the number to half character level plus charisma mod per day. Because what were you at? Charisma what? score per day. It is the only creature I've ever seen. Like, like if Edie oh, has oh, 21, God, 21 uses per day. So God. after 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 Dee negated two one and a half of Adam's encounters, he's like, he's looking at me like, see? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah. Uh, There's been a couple times where like, I dropped three of your guys because they have no will say. <laughs> yeah, I think it's perfectly fair. Uh, especially yeah. because I don't think in the grand scheme of things, this is the last PC or NPC pixie we've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. It'll be fine. Uh, could you imagine Capra's build, but pixie form? Oh, yeah. Here's Holy my fistful crap. of five arrows. They're all sleep arrows. Make your, make your, like... Make all your saves. Uh, you just have to roll badly once. Yeah, <laughs> it feels a little game-breaky. Uh, so. All right. I think, I think it's a good place to leave it. We've got our characters to level up. Uh, you've got some extra treasure, which will probably pay for your, uh, uh, pay training. for your training. Yep. Uh, well, you don't have to pay the lich, but you do have to burn through special co material components and, yeah. you know, um, uh, test out magic and, you know, perform gruesome experiments that turn out to be nothing to do with your training. Um, Why did I have to skin the rabbit alive? Uh, it amused me. <laughs> so some of the things that they spent money on. So Chaga, what did he spend money on? He, I think he bought the Quick Runner's vest. Uh, during the downtime, mm. I'm scanning. I don't see anything else. I think his tower shield now is a plus one. That might have been the upgrade. Uh, Los, because of what we learned with um, visiting Magda, he can he can uh bond with items the items have to stay like close to his urn mm -hmm. uh, in order for him to gain benefit from them and the th he bought with some of the money in the backpack where his urn is kept and so he gains benefit okay. from it uh he's got a plus one s stock now which is a bonded item and i have to think whether or not he gets to attack with it, or is it like he's in ghost form with a sword that can't affect the material world? <laughs> <laughs> you got a sword. What else do you? Right. So it's like, uh... so let, let's logic through this. If you have a plus one sword, you can attack a ghost, and it would do it would do half, half damage. damage. So, so I, I think he's doing half damage until he gets a ghost touch sword because the other way he's yeah. partially in the ethereal or wherever the ghosts are yeah. and he can attack into the material, but he's only doing half damage. So I, I think I think that will be it. So he's got a sword, which means he can at least make sneak attacks and yeah. AOOs, which is great. Um, so those are th those are what he was able to buy or got Chaga to buy for him. Um and then Ghost with his money. 
Uh, I think to put a lot of magic on his uh, masterwork items. So his uh, studded leather, his mithril buckler, plus one. Um, and he was able to buy an efficient quiver. And then Junker. He's no longer blind. That last encounter encouraged me to change my idea of what I'm buying. Junker also did the same. 